Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a Bargello quilt. Now I was inspired to make this because someone sent me a picture of a beautiful Bargello quilt that they made. But they said they actually used my table runner pattern that I wrote a couple years ago to make the whole quilt. So I thought that's really cool and I've got to try that out. So I've written up all the numbers for the new pattern. I've got it all figured out. And don't worry, this is not how the final version will look. By the time you're watching the video, I will have the whole free pattern with pictures and numbers nicely typed up. And it'll be the first link right below the video that says free pattern. So you can get that and then you can follow along if you want to make the quilt at home. So Bargello Patrick, it's pretty fun. It makes the effect of motion. It looks like waves. And that's done by using strips and the strips give the colors up and down movement and it's also wider and narrower so you get this really cool effect of waves. Now Bargello quilts look really fancy and I know there's a lot of methods to put them together but the way I make it is with one block repeated over and over and we're just going to put that together the way we do any other quilt. So if this is your first Bargello, using this method might make it a little more approachable and it's not quite as complicated. So this is a good one to start with. Here's all we need to make the quilt. We need nine fabrics, one yard each. And I've got kind of a range of colors. I've got a blue section, a light section, and then I've got an accent color that's gonna pop out. So the accent color you can see here you can also see it here. I've got the burgundy. So this is basically black and white and a burgundy. So really any color theme will work, but you need to have that accent color that's different than both of the other colors. I've got all nine cut off the bolt here. And before we put these in strips, before we cut them in strips, it's real important to iron them nice and flat. Once they're ironed nice and flat, take one or two yards, depending on how comfortable you are cutting multiple layers, and line them up on your cutting board so that this fold here is right on one of these lines. Now, if you don't lay it straight, if you lay it like this, and you cut, your strip will end up with a big elbow in it. And that's not a great thing. So line it up carefully on one of the lines. So I've got two of the yards there. And I'm going to cut off a little bit at the beginning so I have a nice straight edge. And now I'm lining up my plastic ruler on the lines on the cutting mat. And I like to use a weight at this far end. I've got a five pound dumbbell and that helps hold the ruler so that it doesn't slide while I'm cutting. Now I'm going to go ahead and do two and a half inch cuts. Now you may have noticed these are two and a half inch strips and that's the same size as jelly roll strips but we can't actually use a jelly roll because we need 13 strips from each color. And that's because the same print is going to be used in this stair set fashion. That's what's gonna make the pattern. A jelly roll has one or two fabrics the same, but if you use random fabrics, you won't get the same effect in your pattern. I've got all the strips cut and I've sorted them into stacks here. So I've got 13 different stacks and each stack has one strip of each different print. Then I put them in order, in an order I like, with the accent on the top. Then I did my dark colors. Now your dark colors may be different than blue. Then I put the lights. So I've got one each of the nine different prints here. Now each stack is stacked, it's in the exact same order as this first one. So I've got the orange on the top, then I've got this blue next, then this blue next, that one, all the way down in exactly the same order. So stack them all just like that. I've got 
one of the stacks of strips here. And before I start sewing, I'm going to adjust my stitch length. For most of my patchwork, I use 10 to 12 stitches per inch. But when I'm going to use strip sets that I'm going to cut, I'm gonna make it about 15 to 20 stitches per inch. Now, your machine probably has a different adjuster knob, but you want small stitches. Take your first strip, then let's take the next strip and we're gonna put it on top and we're gonna stitch with a careful quarter inch seam. Now it's very, very important not to stretch either strip. So I like to pull them way back. I lean back a little bit, line them up and just stitch all the way along the edge. Now, if you don't stretch the top or the bottom, your patchwork will come out nice and flat. So if you think one might be getting pulled in faster, you can pin the edge first. But if I pull it way back here and hold it, can you see where I'm holding back here? I'm holding these strips. And then as I sew, neither one can get pulled in faster than the other. And that will give us a nice flat strip unit. Once you get to the edge, you want to finger press the seam. We're going to press it toward the left here. So I'm going to hold this open and then I'm going to draw my fingernail or even the pad of my finger right down the seam. And this makes it so much easier to iron later. So don't neglect this step because it really makes it iron up quickly. Now we're going to take the next strip and it's going to go right over here. It's going to go right here put it right sides together, and again, stitch all the way down the edge. Now I'm stitching in the same direction, but as long as you don't stretch anything, you're gonna be okay. So pull it way back, hold those tight, and then stitch right along the edge. We want to finger press in the opposite direction. So this one went to the left, this one's gonna to go to the right. And I'm going to keep adding strips, and I'm going to just alternate the direction that those seam allowances lay. So this is the last strip here. I'm going to finish stitching it on, finger press it, and take it over to the ironing board. We want to iron this nice and flat, so I'm going to smooth it out. It's pretty flat already because it was finger pressed. But just smooth it first. And I honestly like to use a dry iron first because then if I've got something that looks a little crooked, it isn't permanently ironed. Once you add that steam, it's almost like it sets it. So smooth it out. Iron it nice and flat. And then you can tell if you've got it distorted this way. If you fold this in half like this, and it's laying nice and flat like this one is, your job is done. If it looks like it's stretched a little bit, like if it doesn't lay flat and it looks like it's folded like this, you want to open it up, make sure you've got it flat, and re-iron it. Now all we have to do is stitch this last seam. So it's just folded in half. I'm just going to put these last edges together, stitch down here, and then we're going to have a strip tube. Now this last seam is not going to get pressed. We're just going to leave the tube flat like this and take it over to the cutting board. So we're going to set this right on a line on the cutting board. And then I'm going to make some cuts. And here's the cuts I'm going to make. I'm going to do a three inch, a two and a half, a two and a half, a two, one and a half, one and a half, one. Then I'm going to go back up. I'm going to do one and a half, one and a half, two, two and a half, and two and a half. 
So if you're going to make this, you're definitely going to want to get the free pattern so that you'll have all these numbers already written down for you. And I like to put it right above where I'm going to cut. That way I've got all the numbers right at eye level so I won't make a mistake. So I'm gonna do a three inch cut, then a two and a half, and then another two and a half, and then a two, and a one and a half, and I'm just gonna keep following the numbers and making the cuts. There, that's all the strips we need for the first block. Now I'm gonna start right in the middle, which is this one inch strip here. And I'm going to leave it on the board here, but I'm going to snip out the stitches. I know they're little. I know there's a lot more to pick out because they're little, but it keeps all the other seams from coming apart. So just open that guy up. Now, the blocks, the strips that are on each side of this, if you take a look under there, you can see the accent. I want the accent to be up one position. So I'm just going to rotate this up just a little bit. So now I've got the accent up there. And this seam is on the bottom. So now we want to take out this seam here. Now we're going to do the same thing with this one because this is this is the opposite. It's going to be symmetric. So again, I'm going to rotate it so that accent goes up a little bit. This seam again is on the bottom. You can almost start to see the pattern here. Now this guy here, we're going to peek behind there and we're going to rotate it until the orange goes higher and then take this seam out and I'm going to keep putting that accent higher and higher until I have these seams out of all of the tubes. So as long as you're real careful when you cut your strips that you follow the pattern and cut them the width that it says. Then be real careful when you twist them so that each strip when you open it up has that accent color moving up one position every time. It's pretty easy to make. Now if you make a mistake and you take out the wrong seam, it's okay, you can stitch it up, put it right back here, rotate it around till it's in the right spot, and then take the new seam out. Now we've got enough seams taken apart so that you can see we start in the middle and then we've got matching ones on each side, but we've got one strip left over. We've got the three inch strip left over. Now it's still going to get rotated so that the accent is moved up one position. And this three inch strip only goes on the right hand side of the block. And I'll show you why here. Because when we put this next to the next block, it starts down again and the pattern continues. So I'm going to go ahead and take all of these and I'm going to stitch all the seams in them. So you may have special ways that you mark so that you know this is the, see, the strip that goes on the right. Here is what I do. I'm just going to stack them up. And they're just in order. And then I'm going to take them and flip the whole stack over. And I know this is going to be my strip that's going to go on the left. And I'm going to take these to the machine right in a stack like that. So I've got the stack just the way that I laid it out, just the way that I stacked it up over there. So this strip is going to be on the left. Got it right side up now. The next strip is going to go on this side of it. So I'm going to put these right sides together and stitch down here. 
So just match up the end. You might want to take these little strings out if that bothers you from where your stitching was. And then all of these seams here, for the most part, they're going to nest. So I'm going to use a careful quarter inch seam and I can feel that all these intersections are matching. Now once in a while as we get farther along, we may have to flip one of the seam allowances like right here. This one's going to have to get flipped up, which isn't the way it was ironed, but that's okay. Then they're alternating and matching again. So once in a while you have to change the direction of your seam allowance. And that's just so we can get the whole thing to lay flat. So I took this one, even though it was ironed down, now I'm just going to re-finger press so it's facing up. Now we're going to open this seam up and I'm going to finger press all the seam allowances to the right. So I'm kind of opening it here and drawing the pad or my fingernail right down the seam. Now this next piece it's going to go right here. So put it right sides together. Again, everything's going to match up real easy. And now you can see why we wanted our stitching really small here, because we don't want these seams to come apart. But if you're careful and don't pull on it too much, they will stay just the way you stitched them, especially with those tiny little stitches. So again, flip, if you have to once in a while, flip a seam allowance so that it's laying in the opposite direction of the one that's underneath, go ahead and do that. So again, I'm gonna press the seam allowance to the right. I'm gonna press all these seam allowances to the right. I'm just gonna keep adding strips and finger pressing to the right till the whole block is done. Now this is the very last row. This is that three inch piece that goes only on the right. The sewing is, it's very relaxing. It's, it's actually pretty easy, even though there's all these little seams. They're not very far apart, so it makes it extremely easy to match them up. And now, all we have to do is take this over to the ironing board and steam press it nice and flat. There, the block is done, and this is all we have to make for the whole quilt. We're just going to make 20 of these blocks, then we can lay out the whole thing. Now, when it comes to cutting the rest of your strip tubes here, all you do, this is the one I was already cutting on, just start over, three, two and a half, two and a half, just keep cutting, and when you run out of room here, just get the next tube and continue cutting the strips till you have enough for one block. All the blocks are done, and now we can lay out the quilt and see what it looks like. So there's 20 blocks. So we're going to have five rows with four in each row. And you can already see, as I lay these out, you can already see the pattern going this way, but it's when we lay it this way that you really get a good view of how these waves go. There, now we can see the pattern continuing on, even though it's just made in separate blocks. All we have to do now is sew them into rows and sew the rows together. But before we do that, remember each block had a three inch wide piece just on one side of it. So I cut five extra of those and they are only going to go on the blocks that are over here, not on every block. So I made just five, one for each of these blocks and I'm gonna put that on before I put all the rows together. Now it's pretty easy to sew these together. You won't get seams nesting all the way along here but if you press all of these blocks to the right, like I did, and then press the next row all to the left, I forgot when I was making them, but I remembered afterwards, so I re-ironed all those seams to the left, then when I sew this row to this row, these are all going to nest and it's going to be really easy to put the quilt together. I got all the blocks put together, the whole quilt top done, and a little border added. Now we need to pick a thread color. 
I really don't want the quilting to show up too much. I don't want the thread to show up too much because the patchwork pattern is so dramatic already. So even though the blue matches the quilt really well, I think it's gonna be way too dark in these light sections. You could, but I think I want the thread to recede a little more. So all of these will show less. I'm thinking this one is going to show hardly at all and it matches really nicely in the blue. So let's go with this nice light peach. Now for the quilting pattern, I want to use something pretty simple and a lot of quilters really like a meander or a stipple which is what this is it, this is kind of an abstract meander and this won't fight with any of the patchwork and since i'm using that light thread it's going to recede anyway so this is a good selection for this quilt The Bargello quilt is all done. I can hardly believe I made it. This is really, really fun and satisfying to make. It's pretty big. It's 78 by 94, so that's quite large. Now here's the back. I used a nice batik on the back, and you really can't see that quilting at all on the top or the back. Now when I sewed the rows together, remember I mentioned we had one row with all the seams this way and the next row, you definitely want to iron the seams on that next row the other direction because it was really easy to get these rows together because the seam allowances were going in different directions. Now, to me, this looks like the quilt is right side up. To my husband, Matt, who picked out all these beautiful fabrics, it looks upside down to him like that. So he likes it better this way. And that's one of the nice things about quilting. You get to decide, oops, sideways. You get to decide which way looks better to you. So this way is also very interesting. So there really isn't an up or a down. It's just a matter of preference. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on how to make the Bargello quilt. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you have questions on how to make it, leave those in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them. Now, one more thing. We always do a giveaway at the end of every video. Today's giveaway is a quilt called Chain Letter. And these are really cool fabrics. They have all kinds of sewing notions, buttons, zippers, safety pins. So we, we made this in a tutorial. It's a Cozy Quilt Designs pattern. Look at all the zippers on the back. Really a fun one to make. But today you have a chance to win it. So click the link below the video that says giveaway and put in your email address and your name. And remember, we can send this to a winner anywhere in the world. Good luck. Now, if you like our tutorials and you wanna support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Happy quilting.